Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. Today I am starting a, an exciting new series. Teacher Appreciation Month is coming up soon. It's at the beginning of May. It is May 6th through 10th. And I am going to be putting together five days of teacher appreciation gifts. And I've decided I would go ahead and video those in case you also are looking for some great ideas for the teachers in your life. So the first one I want to bring to you today is making personalized notepads. Now these are notepads that I printed out um, the paper on my regular inkjet printer and I can show you how I did that. And then I actually have these glued together at the top. So these would be a tear away notepad. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the supplies you need. The first thing you need is you need quite a bit of a, a regular eight and a half by 11 paper. And I just used my inkjet printer. I created all of the designs in Canva and I'll show you a little bit of what I did and how I did that. And then I used my paper trimmer here to cut all of the paper down. A good example. When I printed them, they were like this. Okay, so two sheets to a page. And then I used my paper trimmer to cut them. And so these are eight and a half by five and a half in size. And I have one for each teacher. The other thing I did, now this I did on my Cricut. So I have the craft board. And so this is like really, really thick construction paper, or not construction paper, um, cardstock. This is super, super thick. It'd be like putting two pieces of cardstock together, the probably the 80 pound or, you know, something like that. Not, not really light. Anyway, um, I had my Cricut cut out the craft paper for me and that just made it a whole lot easier instead of trying to put it in the paper trimmer. So these will be the back. Okay, so they'll go back here like this. Um, the other thing that you're going to need for your project is just regular Mod Podge. Now, this is a gloss luster. You could use really any one you want, but this is the one I have on hand and I really like it. And I have an old paintbrush. Um, I do wash this after, after I'm done with the particular craft so that, you know, once I wash it, it's right back to normal. So this is a great tool to not only get your um, notepads put together, but then this brush is specifically for this particular medium. And I have, that's why I have the washi tape on it. You are going to need some binder clips. And I find that two large ones and two medium sized ones are perfect for this size. And then I have a little bit of scrapped paper, scrap paper here, and I will show you how I incorporate these. This just helps to keep the binder clips from making indentions, and then this is in case I have any little drips from glue, which actually I haven't had, but I'm kind of err on the side of caution. Okay, so let me take you over to Canva super fast. I just want to show you, you know, the gist of what I did and then we will get to putting one of these together. Okay, so here I am in Canva. So this is at canva.com. And once I signed in, I went over to create a design and it gives you your blank canvas. And I searched up here for notepad and I found one that looks like this. It's aligned. It almost looks like notebook paper, which I really like, especially for teachers. The next thing I did is I created a blank box down here. I wanted to put a picture, but I didn't want it to be um, obscured by the lines. So I literally just went over to elements and usually right up here, at least in my Canva, they, I have a shapes. And so I just clicked on the square 
and then I resized it to the size that I wanted. So this is actually an eight and a half by 11 size piece of paper if I were to print this just like this. This box right here, um, to be honest, I am not 100% sure, sure of the size. I guess I could um, figure that out, but I just resized it to make it look the way I wanted to. And then this, it started out up here at the top, it said a note from, and I actually just changed the font. And I really like, this font is called Hey Gotcha. And I just like it, it's, it's block, it's clean, it's all uppercase, but at the same time, it's a little whimsy and I just think it's fun. So the next thing I did is I just went into the text box and I put the teacher's name. So I'm going to go ahead and make one for myself today to show you. So note from Mrs. Bailey. And then I had the text box, uh, the regular shaped box down here to be the space for the picture. So this is the basic template for the notepad. And then I decided to put some designs down here. And you could go into your elements and literally just search for anything. So let's see, some things, I am, an, I just love coffee. So I would search for coffee. And then you have your choice of regular photos, some uh, frames, you could make like a little frame down here. I could use any of these and put them in that spot and then fill those with pictures. That actually is kind of a cool idea. Let's try that. So let's say I didn't use the box and I just chose one of these. Okay, so this is where I would put it. And now I can come and I can go find some pictures and put them here. Click on elements. And then I'm gonna click coffee again. I'm not sure why my search didn't work. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to graphics. And I'm just gonna go look through these. Now, I, if I see a couple that I like, then I could totally put both of them here. If I see just one that I'm thinking, oh, that, you know, that one really takes to um, just be the perfect one, then I could erase this cup. But I just think that's a really cool idea. I'm actually gonna move it over here in case I don't, don't use it. But I really like this. Okay, to make me happy. Make me coffee, bring me coffee, be coffee. That to me is hilarious. I am going to resize that and I'm gonna stick that down here. And let's put it right here, kind of at the top. Kind of like it's a little to-do list. And then let's find a coffee cup that we could put there. And they pop, they're just, there's so many designs. You could literally just put whatever you want. So I think that I like this one, kind of a, more of a, um, I don't want to say cartoon, but more like a little graphic instead of like an actual photo photo. And I'm going to put that right here. That's perfect. Okay. So this will be one of my pages and I'm actually going to go ahead and delete that. Um, that would be a great idea, by the way, to use the frames if you were making a notepad for a grandparent where you had the kids' pictures. That that just, you know, that's an upcoming Grandparents' Day video. Great thinking, guys. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I print these two to a page. One, it really just saves on paper. And two, um, I like having more than one design. Just because I think it's fun and festive. The other thing is I would duplicate. So we're gonna duplicate the page. And so now I have two of the exact same page. Now I don't want the same graphics down here at the bottom. So something that I would like to do is show you where when you pull up all of your images, you can actually, it'll give you like the top six or so. And then it'll say magic recommendations. I'm going to click on see all and I'm going to look and see what AI is suggesting that I use. 
Oh, look at that. That is a darling cup. I really like that one. Okay, so on my second page, I'm going to take away that particular cup and I'm going to go ahead and take away my little list and I'm going to place this one. So in Canva, you just click on it and then it'll insert it. And then what will happen is you'll see, see how I have a new magic recommendations. So that will pop up based on what you're using. We're going to go ahead and resize this particular coffee cup and put it here. So it'll look like that. I think that is the sweetest little cup. I just think that makes me happy just looking at it. Okay, so then the next thing is just to see like, is that all I want to put on there? Do I want to put some words on there? You can click back from magic recommendations. And I think, well, here's a word I really like. I don't know if I like that font, but let's click, tell you what, let's click on that font and then the magic recommendations show up. So then we'll click on see all. And we're going to look and see if we like a different, okay, see coffee break. Let's do that. Let's delete the one that we entered and let's add, um, what do you think? Do we want this coffee break or this one? I like this one. It's a little more dainty. And so we bring that in and we can resize it however big you want. And I'm going to put that over here. And when I do, I see that I just need to resize my cup a little bit more. All right. So another thing, and this is very similar to design space, is I can click on both of these items. Okay. And then I can go to align element. Well, let me click on them again. I went too fast. You click on these three little dots. And then you're going to see align elements. And I'm going to align both of them to the left. Okay. And then I'm actually going to group them together. So now they are one. And then I can move it however I want. So if I don't want it right against these lines over here. Okay. I think that is so cute. I'm actually really going to make these. These are great. So what I would do after this is definitely I would come over here to file. And then I would click on save. Now I've actually already... Um, made a folder that says custom notepads and so I will probably um, change this to let's see Jen Jen's coffee notepad <laughs> all right and then I'm gonna I'm just gonna it all it automatically saves everything you do but I just like to hit save just on the off chance that something didn't save right and then you have your really neat notepad ready to go. So the last thing you're going to do is you're going to go to share up here in the top corner, and then it's going to give you some options. So I went to download and it defaults to PNG. Well, I don't want this to be an image. I actually want to choose PDF print. So if I click on PDF print, now I have, I'll be honest, I have not experienced or experimented with any of these other settings. I have just found that, you know, printing to my inkjet printer with these basic settings was just fine. And then um, you can do the color profile. Okay. And I just left everything at the default, right? Then I'm going to click a download. Okay. And once it downloads, it will download it as a PDF. So we're going to go ahead and open that. And then you can see, let me make this smaller for you. I've got both of my pages. So the key for printing these is when you go to print, okay, you make sure your printer is selected. And I'm actually going to come down here. I only want it to print on one side, but I want to go to more settings. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to put two pages to a sheet of paper. This is good for um, 
economical purposes, but it also automatically makes sure that both of these are sized the exact same size and I don't have to do anything. So then the next thing that I would do is I, the other thing when you do this, by the way, is if I do one copy, then I get two pieces of paper, all right? Or I'll get two notepad pieces of paper on one sheet. So what I did for my teacher ones is I changed it to 25. Okay. And there we go. I don't know why it's, there we go. So I changed it to 25, which means it's going to print 25 of these exactly the way you see them. And that means that when I cut them in half, I will have 50 sheets of paper. And I thought 50 was a decent number for a notepad. It's not too much and it's not too little. Um, and so, you know, of course, I'm going to leave a little note with the teacher that if they ever run out, they can just contact me for a new um, a new notepad and I'll be happy to give that to them. I just I'm a teacher myself, so I definitely would want to just give them another notepad at some point when they run out of the current one. OK, so then the next thing you would do would be to hit print and you would get 25 pages that print out to your printer and then you could do the cutting and assembling. So let's go back to the overhead camera and talk about assembling your notepad. Okay, so after you print your um, pages, then you want to cut them. And what all I did was I literally just took a paper trimmer and I made sure that when I put it in, I made sure to stop at the five and a half. And then when I took this side out, it was perfectly five and a half. The paper that was over on this side, I did make sure that it measured exactly five and a half. And there were a few pages where for whatever reason I had to, to trim off, you know, probably about a 16th or an eighth of an inch, but um, it pretty much it was down the center. The next thing I did is I alternated the designs. So I'll just move that out of the way. So I this is for a science teacher. So she loves space like I do. We have a space theme and then we have here like some, um, you know, organic elements like uh, chemical bonds and, and all of that. So I just alternated them and it was didn't take any time at all to do that. Okay, so once you get all of your pages, you're going to stack them. And then, like I said earlier, I printed or cut this particular craft board on my Cricut. And I'm going to put this here because my, my pad is not like super hard like a tabletop. So to assemble, all right, I put the pages on top of the craft board. I hold them upside down so they're like this. And I make sure that they are all aligned at the top. And then I turn it to where it's on the left and I do it again. And I'll, at the entire time I'm holding it so it doesn't move. And then I like to do this just you know, it's just for me, really. And then I take these and I put these here. These little, these are like little craft board scrap pieces. And I'm just going to stick them here. And that's really kind of why I have the rubber band. And the reason why I have these here is because when I put the binder clip on the paper, I don't want it to make indentions. And then I have one across the top. Okay. So I actually don't want to put the ones across the top first. I'm going to make sure all of this is lined up really good. And I'm going to take my binder clip and I'm actually going to go pretty close to the edge. All right. And then I'm going to come over on this side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add the binder clip. And I want to be fairly close to the edge because I want that pressure. Um, I want the, the corners to be like really tight. 
And then what will happen is this will go in here. Now, actually, I forgot to put that on there to begin with. So we'll go put it back in there really fast. The reason why I want one across the top is because when I use these ginormous binder clips, I don't want them to make indentions either. Okay, there we go. I think we got it. Perfect. Okay, so there's this side. And redo this side. I have not had enough coffee this morning, so. And it is quite early. I'm just going to get that in there. And put that on. Okay, so there we go. Now we have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Mod Podge across the top. And I'm actually going to put it on fairly thick. I start out with a thin coat, just kind of getting it onto all the page fibers. And then I kind of do two more little coats. Then I'm going to take this binder clip and I'm going to put it right here on this side. And I will take this binder clip and put it right here on this side. So it'll be very tight along the top and everything you can see. It just it looks like something that you bought at a store. Okay. The other thing that I use is once I have all of the glue onto the board, I just lay this down and that way if any glue drips off of the um, notepad, it's going to drip onto this little piece of paper and I can just throw that away so that's not a big deal. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this going. And I really, this is so easy. I don't know that I will ever buy another notepad again. So I just take some of the Mod Podge and I just start going and I go along the entire top edge. And at first you'll see like these aren't really tightly closed together and that's okay because the binder clips will take care of that in a little bit. But I just go along the top and you want to be careful not to get um, get it everywhere. So, and then something I just thought of, I am going to actually have to move my little craft board pieces down because they will end up sticking. And to be honest, I the first couple of notepads I made, I didn't use the little craft board, but what I found is that the binder clips, sometimes, depending on how many papers you have, they will put a little bit of an indention. So let's see about, I think we're going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and take this one off, and then I'm going to move this one down because I don't want I don't want it to stick to the cardboard. Okay. And that is the thing about crafting. You do things and then you try new things and you make adjustments along the way. But this has just been my experience with making notepads. They're so easy. Okay. All right. That's way better. I think that'll, that'll work. Okay. So that was one coat. And then literally I'm just going to put a couple of coats along this top. Okay, now that I have all of the glue onto the top, and you can see it's pretty, um, it's pretty glossy, 
okay and it's um, the first layer will dry really quickly and then I like that because it's kind of like a base for the glue and then the subsequent layers of glue they just lay on top and it's really cool so here's what I'm doing I'm using the cardboard I have it down a little ways and then I am putting this binder clip over on this side but I'm wanting it more on the on the little craft board instead of on the actual paper itself. Okay, and I'm just making sure that I don't have any extra glue in it. And then I'm gonna put this one on this side. Okay, all right. And then this just dries. It doesn't take super long to dry, but a lot of times I will make these in like in the evening and then in the morning when I am when I wake up it looks like this and this just ensures that if I glue these before I head off to bed then I know that I'm not going to get um, anxious and impatient and then it'll definitely be read, ready in the morning okay so we just are going to let that set the other thing that I would like to show you before we finish up this video is I got this idea because um, my parents, they we love playing games. And so the, the wizard game comes with a score pad, but it's really tiny. Like it's this big and it's the boxes are really small to write in. So I told you know, my parents like, hey, why don't I just make the pages bigger and then we can, you know, put them together. I can make them into a notepad. So they loved that idea. It was great. Now, this is one that I already made. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because I am going to be leaving the notepads like this. And we might add a ribbon and a pen on top. And that will be the gift for one of the days for Teacher Appreciation Week. Well, if you ever make a notepad where you want a cover sheet, so this is, um, you could use any kind of patterned paper, you could use scrapbook paper, you could use construction paper. This is just 110 pound cardstock. So I am literally going to just measure again what I, um, I do need to measure because I made this a while back and I can't remember. All right. All right, so we are at, it looks like 10.8. Um, or 11.8, let me do that again. Then along here, all right. So I just need to cut off this much here. Here we have 11 and we're at the point eight. Okay, we're good. There we go. Like they say, measure twice, cut once. I usually measure several times. Okay, so once you have the paper that you're gonna put on top, then you line it up along the bottom just like this and then we're gonna fold it around the top. Okay, and I like to crease it really well on the front, and then I flip it over and I crease it really well along the back. Okay, and then when I take the paper out, I can see this is along the top and this is along the back. So that is super easy. We just paint on some more Mod Podge. And I don't use a whole lot. Um, you don't really need a whole lot. You could use regular craft glue. Um, and I have done this with um, scrapbook paper that was fairly thin. So, okay. So when you are done painting on your glue, and don't forget to wash your brush when you're all done with the notepad crafting. And that way you'll have one dedicated brush for the glue 
right. Okay, so I just take my notepad and I'm just going to literally place it back down and fold it back up like so. Okay. And the best part about putting a cover on is you can personalize the cover. So I will probably come back in with some kind of artwork either some stickers or maybe some vinyl um, but now I have a cover to my notepad you certainly do not have to put a cover on your notepad but I just think that it's a good addition and then sorry I thought I had my binder clip all there and then I literally just take a binder clip and I just put it there and I just let it sit for a while and get, let the glue adhere to the craft board. All right, so that's all I'm doing there. So that, my friends, is how you can make your own personalized notepad for a teacher in your, in your life. And I love the idea of alternating the designs. They're so cute. All right. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope that this first craft was inspiring for you to come up with a list of five small, inexpensive things that you can make for the teachers in your life. And I will be having four more videos come out for the Teacher Appreciation Week. So in the meantime, make sure that you have plenty of coffee and craft some beautiful things every day. Until next time, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.